So in previous videos, we went through the signal flow, as well as just made some basic sounds and kind of explored the functionality. Today, we're going to exclusively take a look at the VCOs and the mixer. These are our sound sources. So right now, I've got the DFAM in a default patch. So if you want to follow along, you can set up your DFAM exactly like, like I have. So a couple of things. The, the VCOs cover a 10 octave range, which is just huge. And because there's all kinds of different ways to change the pitch, sometimes they can operate above or below our hearing levels. So if you are having an issue hearing something in certain situations or it modulates out of the hearing range, that's just something that you want to be aware of, that it could possibly be still making sound, you just can't hear it. But it's also important to recognize that because of these frequencies and this huge range, you can still you can use your DFAM for a lot of other uses besides just as a percussive synth. So the pitch of oscillator one and two can be modified by using the frequency knobs by the pitch. If this is turned on, it can be uh, modified by the pitch going through the sequencer, the envelope amount, and then you could also modify it through the patch bay. If you push the trigger, it sends step one right through. And if we turn up our VCA to K, it holds for quite a long time. So you can And right now I have VCO1 going through, VCO2 is just off right now and the noise is off. There are two types of waves that you can choose, the pulse wave and the triangle wave. So let's hear what those sound like. Now for pitch modulation, you could turn this on and then the pitch in the sequencer affects the frequency. So if we play it, right now it's they're almost all turned pretty close to 12 o'clock. So that's one way you can modulate your pitch. Now, if you notice the VCO decay, if I hit this, it doesn't really appear to be doing much of anything. And that's because this controls the decay of the VCO envelope. So with this set to 12 o'clock, it's at zero. So this isn't doing anything, so therefore the decay doesn't change anything. But as we turn up the envelope amount, or turn it down into a negative value, the decay suddenly plays a part. Now let's take a look at what this does. I'm going to turn it up a couple notches. So you can kind of hear that what happens is it starts really high and instantly goes low. Back to its original pitch. If we turn this up, to start really high and go to the same original pitch, but considerably slower. And if we turn it all the way up, extremely slow. So in a way, this envelope, what it's essentially doing is take is modulating this frequency similar to like if I were to take this and go, So that's just one way to understand how the envelope works. Likewise, if you turn it in reverse into negative voltages, which is anywhere to the left of 12 o'clock, it has the opposite effect. So it's gonna start low and go back to its original pitch. And that would be the same thing as if this were set to zero and you were to physically
And a lot of the reason that this happened is because naturally when you play something like a kick, a kick drum or a snare drum, there's an original, when you first strike, when the mallet first strikes the head of the drum, there's a pitch and it's sometimes a little bit higher and it goes down lower. So, so that's how we create these sounds. And if you wanted it to be very aggressive, you turn it way up. It gets almost kind of silly sounding. Somewhere in this range is kind of a nice natural sounding percussive sound. But of course, all three of these interact with each other. So if you change one value, it changes the other values. And it's about really trying to dial in, dial them in so they get the sound you want. That's a nice kick sound. Let's talk a little bit about how these two oscillators interact with frequency modulation and the hard sync. So if this is set to on, the hard sync forces the phase of oscillator two to match the phase of oscillator one. And it creates interesting waveforms and different wave shapes. The manual describes it as a sharp metallic flange-like sound but it also, it makes the pitch stay locked in with VCO1. So how I like to use this, you can turn this down and turn this up and actually make sure this is off, tune, tune them together. So right now we're only hearing oscillator two, but as I tune this up and right now hard sync is off. That sounds pretty good together. So now if we turn this on, it kind of creates that metal sound and here, let's turn this up a little bit. I'll turn this so it lasts longer and you can hear it. So it stays locked in but just changes the timbre of the sound. But if we turn this off, then the pitches aren't locked in together. So we'll lock them back in, turn this on. And of course, if we turn this down, Now the frequency modulation, it sounds, has a pretty dramatic effect when this is turned off, but it's a nice subtle effect when you turn it on. Here, actually, let me turn this up so we can hear the difference. And if we were to turn this off. Tighten it back up a little bit. And that's a pretty cool percussive sound. So now with our sequence pitch mod switch, you can adjust to either have the sequencer modulate the pitch of, of both VCOs or off or have it just modulate the second one. And if you remember when I was, or as you just saw, when the hard sync was on, it's, it kept the pitch locked in, but it changed the timbers. So this is a really great way when you have hard sync on and VCO2, or in the sequence assigned to VCO2, to get some really interesting stuff going on. So I'm just gonna dial in a quick, subtle sequence, and we're gonna play it through. <laughs> So right now, you hear, if we turn this the VCO2 down, you can hear that it's just that kick sound going on on VCO1, 
every <laughs> single one because it's it's off. The pitch is off. So the kick sound that we had dialed in before is going through every single step on VCO1. But on VCO2, it's much different. We have the pitch modifying VCO2. So listen to each step. <laughs> And when played together, you can really get some cool stuff on. So you can see, you can get a, some really great sounds just by dialing in the two VCOs. We, at this point, we haven't even touched sound modification through the filter. But before we get there, let's just make sure that you understand the mixer section. The VCO on top controls the level of VCO1. The mixer on the bottom controls VCO level 2. And the middle is our noise. So now you understand how to use the two voltage controlled oscillators as well as our noise and control the sound levels through the mixer and how the pitch of the sequencer can modify these frequencies. In our next video, we're going to get into sound modification using the filter.